What's up, viewers, subscribers, and agents of light? It's your boy in light, Lucifer Fan Prince, coming at y'all once again. I know that my previous video, speaking about certain topics such as the curse of Christianity, has had a lot of people in the comment section a little flustered. But as I tell people in the real, in the real, in the real time, is to stay aware and to stay focused on what the complexity of the issue is, as opposed to just accepting things for what they're worth. But in this video, I'm about to show you the correlation between religion and the court system. <laughs> now, I know this is going to blow a lot of people away, but here, here I go. Before I proceed with this video, the truth is, this does not constitute legal advice, nor does it constitute anything anti-government. The sole purpose of this video is for informational and educational purposes only. Now, when it comes down to what we call the principal obligation, we have to understand the definition before I proceed. If you look up Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 1865 edition, pretty old. If you can find one, you're very fortunate. But if you look up the word constitutor, it says that he or she who swore by a simple pact to pay the debt of another. And this is always the principal obligation. Bouvier's Law Dictionary, 1865. Now, in the respects of this so-called corporate entity we call United States, because it's all business, this is not no republic for the free. It's not democratic. It's just bullshit. This is a fucking business circa 1871. Now, circa 1871 means that it went into corporate status ship, which means that it went into receivership to the creditors that actually functionalized the Virginia Corporation or also known as the corporation or the company by what? Charter. So the East India Company basically claimed this, and we already know who was at the head of that, this punk bitch named Queen Elizabeth. And if you're watching this video around children, please remove them from your space because my videos are not for children anymore, unfortunately. YouTube guidelines, you know, guidelines, the things. Anyway, going into the principal obligation, going back to House Joint Resolution 192, June 5th, 1933, the government obligated itself to pay your debts. All the legal jargon in there from the amendments made to it, the government's responsible for your debts. But the government's are responsible for your debts that they place against you. So since they place debts against you and say you are charged, look at the word charged, charged. See, what are you charged for? You're charged for items. Go to a store, right? This pencil could be, this pencil, could be 10 cent, 10 cents, right? Monetary value plus tax a little bit, probably like a dollar two, you know, something like that because it's inflation. Now, if I bought 10 of them, so they're gaining their money off of interest because they're creating it out of thin air. But you have to mention to yourself in your conscience that you have charges placed against you out of thin air. So they're basically trying to do a system of force and intimidation in order to monetize their bankrupt system. See, the government's bankrupt. Why people claim bankruptcy? We'll get there later in the series. Because they're illiterate about finances. A lot of people who want to try to dispute credit card companies or they want to try to dispute creditors. You, They are not creditors. They are debtors. They are operating in deficit. Just because they have lavish buildings and they have these fancy cars they send you and these memberships and all this shit. Let me tell you something. Credit card companies are often associated with casinos, people. This is real shit. And then they take your acceptance of their interest rates and then you take your personal information and put it on a piece of paper or you do it online and then you turn around and you make yourself responsible as the surety for them to give you the credit out of thin air. They give you credit out of thin air and they know you're going to default because it's considered a liability. 
So now that it's considered a liability, you have the inability to pay it back because you never had anything in the first place. Notice whenever you go to places or hotels or anywhere in the world outside of your personal domain, it's all an offer. And yes, many Americans have been duped into accepting these unilateral contractual offers because the industry that we know as industrial society does not, does not have the capability to cover your expenses. This is where we get this terminology called the debt of society. You owe a debt to society. You don't owe society a motherfucking thing. So all these self-righteous people walking around out here talking about I pay taxes and so forth. You're feeding the beast by your sweat equity. That money does not go to people you think it goes to, nor does it go to industries and services. It only goes to goods and services that the capital actually finances. Now, most people are like, well, what do you mean? Well, do a little bit more research, you'll get it. But remember, when it all boils down to the principal obligation, it's what we call the fine line. Who is the signature on the documentation? You, the natural person, signed the documentation and obligated yourself to finance their personal operations. Which means if it's credit, if it's criminal, if it's housing, if it's mortgage, whatever, I don't care. You are still the signature. You are the individual who is considered the ignorant individual or the less E in legalistic terms to what is considered that contract. Majority of people sitting in prison today, literally sitting in prison today, are considered surety. And that's why they keep them in some of the most secure places because they're trying to accrue as much monetary, financial, you know, so-called fiat based upon prosecutorial bonds upon them being there. So when people, every, when they hear these, it costs the state $1.2 million to house a person for 12 years. But what if that person actually worked for 12 years for free? How much did it really cost? It's booming business. And that's one of the reasons why I tell people slavery still exists in this fucking country. So people, instruct your kinfolk, those you trust, love near and dear, to not commit any crime lest they be charged. Because there's one thing about the involuntary servitude clause of what they call the United States Constitution, which is true, it's an involuntary servitude. So that means that you can voluntarily sign yourself into slavery. Yeah, sign this deal because the court system operates off of force and coercion. So don't ever think for one minute that slavery is abolished. And stop listening to them fucking people who come on these channels and all these little podcasts and shit and make you think that it's gone. It's not. Your ass slips one time, they're going to put you back on a plantation for a certain duration of time. That's called indentured servitude. But you can also be an indentured servant to your credit card too. Because for the duration that they loan credit to you, which is nothingness, out of thin air, they'll give it to you based upon your acceptance of the debt that they're giving you. And they're going to write it off as a liability. They're going to sell it to a debt collection agency. And they're just going to sit back and wait on your dishonor on the contract. So people, the principal obligation all boils down to you actually being fully disclosed about what they say you owe. If they can't give you full disclosure about what they say you owe, the contract is invalid. It is, it is null and void. Now, principal obligation. It all boils down to who wrote the contract first. If the offerer said that I will give you up to $10,000 worth of credit, guess what? Whoever put their name, as far as a corporation is concerned, on that contract, they're responsible for the debt. Why the fuck are y'all still paying on credit cards? Why? <laughs> Why are I still paying on credit cards? See, I don't use them. Because I understand the financial literacy and overstand and understand the financial literacy that goes along with that. Why are y'all still paying on them? Why are y'all still arguing with these people? I told you, Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, 1692, United States Code, 1692, it told you. 
They only have one time to contact you. Other than that, you, in your rebuttal, you need to establish the fact that you don't have to pay people shit because they're fraud and they never fully disclosed that this, in its inception, through third parties, was actually sold as a liability. This is something you'll never learn on the airwaves. Why y'all worry about credit card companies? Think about it. Now, for the acceptance for value process, it's not hard. All you have to do is accept the presentment for its value, which means that what they drafted it up as, I'm not in dishonor because I'm not saying I am not willing to pay. I'm saying based upon your constitutional position, you said that you were going to pay it. You were abnegating your position in office. But you lo and behold, they still get rich. So that's for all these gurus on YouTube that want to sit here and try to spit these facts and make you think it's so complicated. It's not. <laughs> it's not. Now, I know a lot of people might detract and say some stupid shit, whatever. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. But the truth will always do for the truth because this is in black and white. I just gave you the sources in the previous videos. It's your choice to take it if you want it or not. If you don't wish to use knowledge, please stop this video right now at 11.22 and ride out. Take off. But if you do want the truth, guess what? You're going to have to come to a realization that you're going to have to study the system. You have to learn a little bit more literacy when it comes to this thing. Because I will tell you, one thing for sure and two things for certain. All these things that are going on in society right now, all these things that are going on socially are just distractions. It's funny how every time a tumultuous financial situation happens, those who have actually been conducting their business are always insulated, but the majority of people aren't. The majority of people aren't insulated because they're worried about love and hip hop and so forth and so on and all the social distractions and the vanity of social media. Yeah, people, you might not like it, but Social media also promotes what? Consumerism. Advertisements. So they're basically keeping you in a slump. Or they're presenting you something and you're keeping yourself in a slump because you don't know anything else. You better study the rules of the chessboard or else don't sit your ass down at the table. What you need to do is take the debt that the government said that you owe and turn it back on them. Watch how to react. Is what it is. 13 minutes. It's not a webinar. It's nothing, whatever. If people wish to donate to my channel for keeping up with the content, fine. If you don't, fine as well. But the truth will still spout as a fountain. Still will come. And that's just the way it will be. Universal balance. Peace, light, love. Fuck the agents. Don't contact me. I do not consent, nor do I oblige. Nope. And creditors, agencies, lawyers, esquires, barristers, so forth and so on. I will be the first person to say this. Y'all are awful shit. And y'all are stealing money from people. And you have the keys to knowledge. But you won't let them in because what you're doing is that y'all lie for a living. Anybody think I'm doubting what I'm saying? Anybody's doubting what I'm saying? Or anyone think I even doubt what I say? Look up the root word of the word lawyer. It means to lie. Take care. <laughs> Stay tuned for the next upload. Stop accepting the principal obligation. Start holding these entities accountable. And you can bring yourself out of debt. That's how you take control of a country. But... We're not going to do that in the long shot. That's how you take control of yourself, your personal affairs. Peace.